Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to have the opportunity to work on a pen uh, spin fisher. It's the Spin Fisher 5, which is the current generation minus one. They just released the Spin Fisher 6s. This is the 5 or the Spin Fisher V4500. It's a nice reel. It's an all around general purpose reel that can be used in salt water or freshwater lakes or casting from the banks. Uh, Rennie sent me in this one and the 3500. We're going to do the 3500 as well, just because there's a lot of people that search for that. And uh, if they don't see that, they don't realize they're similar in nature. But if you have a 4500, a 3500, a 5500, they're all pretty much the same in that range. The difference being the spool capacities and the gear size. But for the most part, the reels mechanically are pretty much the same reels. All right, we got a little bit of a bird's nest on that spool. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the spool as we go about showing you how the reel comes apart, how to service it, how to put it back together again. So Rennie tells me these are just tight, which generally is an indication that, well, the reel has been fished and the um, greases have probably dried up. We'll do a test now. Oh, that's very tight. There's something a bit catchy in there. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, clean it up. Sometimes it's uh, a matter of um, some issues going on in there. Here's some sand. That's never a good sign. And I don't like sand on my bench, among other places. So I'll try and scoot that out and into my, my, my little trash receptacle there. I use a little box here for the, the trash. You still can't see it, and I'll apologize for that. Don't let anybody go straining your necks here. All right, let's just take that off to the side for a moment, get that sand out of there. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to remove the handle. Now sometimes the spin fisher has a screw that goes into the main gear, even though this is not turning. So take it off just to make sure that that's not the case. And once you do that, you know you have a handle that is threaded into the main gear and you can reverse thread that by turning it in a clockwise manner. That will release the handle and just bring that all the way out. So this looks like it's the original lubrication in this reel. And uh, we'll do our best to, to kind of clean that out. And again, we'll take a look at the, uh, the internal gears. And uh, I think that's probably all that's going to be needed. I didn't notice any knocking, any clanging or the like. I do notice there's a lot of salt buildup here. You can just kind of see it in that, that joint. That joint should be closing and, and opening smoothly. So chances are this is a saltwater reel that is worked in the sand and on the beaches in addition maybe to doing the boat. Part of your lubrication is a good flush with some uh, penetrating oil. I'm just going to use a cotton swab now to kind of wipe, wipe off the rest there just to make sure that we've got that kind of swinging nicely so it doesn't become a problem in the future. You'll notice I'm taking my pieces and parts, putting them into a parts tray. Uh, today it seems to be a fast food uh, container, but uh, anything, any old tray will do. You don't have to rush out and go get a parts tray from uh, your local hardware store. Not needed, just uh, make do with what you have. And I like to, to do a couple of things. I like to take pictures along the way. And I like to uh, grab a schematic if I can. Now this reel I've worked on in the past, the 4500 series, so I haven't pulled the schematic. As I mentioned, they're kind of the same uh, mechanical layout. So if you're working this for the first time, go ahead and get the schematic. And one of the schematic sites that you can go to is uh, mysticparts.com. That's a site that sells pen replacement parts. I just had uh, two 5500 or 550SS, five, the third generation of the Spin Fisher, come in. Both of them needed some anti reverse dogs. I was able to go to the site, determine what the part was, and then go order the part. So if you need a pen part or if you need the schematics to follow along, go there first before you begin taking it apart. That schematic is going to show you the internal. Uh, look in an exploded view how those pieces come apart and uh, that'll be very helpful to you if you get stuck along the way. Pictures help as well. Use a cell phone, use a video camera, 
use a film camera if you want. <laughs> Whatever works for you, but make sure that you record what you're doing. Don't trust your mind to answer some questions for you. I was getting trouble that way. I just uh, got two wheels in that have uh, disconnected bales. <clears throat> There's the fellow thought that kind of remembered how they came apart. And uh, well, <clears throat> I'm going to try and put those back for him. All right, this side plate should come off now. It's got a little rubber seal underneath it here. Just be aware of that. And we can see pretty much that it's exactly as described. It's tight because all of this grease and the like is all just kind of caked up in here. You can see it. And uh, once that dries, that actually acts as a cement as opposed to a, a lubricant. And it kind of keeps you from doing what you need to do with the wheel. We have two small screws. I'm going to try first with a micro driver. I always keep a box of micro drivers nearby. And that should enable me to take those two screws out. This is one of those interesting wheels. I had a wheel like this in not too long ago. And the problem I had with the wheel was actually this little burring on the uh, crosswind block. It uh, got ran out, uh, run out of uh, true. I think it's a bushing rather than a burring, not sure. But regardless, it uh, became uh, rounded. And for the life of us, we couldn't figure out why in the world we were getting the performance issues that we were getting. Finally, we had no, no other place to look other than that uh, that little barring bushing thing here. And uh, that might be what's causing this little rough pickup here because I'm noticing we've got a lot of grease and dried salt and the like, and it's all around there. So best to get a dose of that penetrating wire and let it go sit off on the side here for a moment. <clears throat> the shaft came out fine. I'm just going to wipe that off and put that into the parts tray. And once you remove the shaft, then you can remove your main gear. And we can see that, uh, yep, it's time for some re-lube there. And then I believe that this is screwed on. So let's go one more time to that micro driver. Let me get that little salt off there. See if we can pull it with that. We can. And this will be the whole bottom of the reel then. So while I'm doing this, if you have a... Uh, uh, if you have a desire to learn more about fishing wheels, how, they, how they're made, how they come together, how they come apart, how they get serviced, and the like, well, if you subscribe to my channel, that's a good place to learn more. I work on all kinds of fishing wheels, and I'm trying to record these and save what I know for other folks to, to use to learn how to do this. So, if you subscribe, hit the notification button. That's when you'll see all the reels that I'm working on, and you can make a decision as to whether that's a reel uh, that you want to learn more about. I know some areas of the country where bass fishing is, is huge. Uh, they're very much interested in the low-profile bait casters, for example, and those reels aren't really used too much around the mid-Atlantic seaboard, although they are gaining in popularity with the release of some of these reels designed for saltwater use. But uh, I do them, and uh, you may want to skip the saltwater trolling reels and just learn a little bit more about those bait casters. And if that's the case, uh, the notification button is going to tell you, well, today Dennis is working on a, a saltwater reel. Maybe I'll pass. Tomorrow you may see an ultralight, or you may see a um, classic or something you want to learn more about. Well, then that's the opportunity to go and uh, jump on board and watch that uh, as well. All right, I just cleaned off the crosswind gear. I want to check all the teeth to make sure that they're clean, and they are. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a fishing reel grease. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease. <coughs> Those of you that hear me refer to, I'm going to put blue grease on it. Well, that's the blue grease if I haven't showed it in the video that you happen to be watching. I'm going to get a goodly amount on it, front, back, and sides. It uh, kind of rides everywhere. And then a little bit on the stud and behind the case. And then we can go reposition that uh, that gear. And I didn't put that uh, that screw in, so I left that out on the table. So let's get that right back in so we don't lose that. 
So judging by the condition of this reel, this reel has either fished an awful lot or it hasn't been serviced in a while. And uh, given that the Spinfisher 6 series has been out about a year at least, let's just say it's probably at least a minimum of a year since this, uh, this reel got serviced here. So I recommend that it's to do an annual service on these. That is always going to help keep the, uh, the stuff from accumulating, like the stuff that we were looking at here. And it's going to help you have a smooth reel when you're fighting the fish each and every time. All right, I just want to... So there's, a, there's one of the, the issues. That's why this pickup is so, so difficult. This one is stuck. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that. So this seems to be a, a fairly common issue with these reels then is this uh, this little bushing getting stuck. Let's go ahead and take that off. There's a screw that holds it on. And then see if we can't somehow pull that off. That's why it's getting harder for this thing to kind of work its way through because there's the salt build up behind here so we're just going to kind of scrape that off. I'm using a a pick to do that. You can see it on the side here too. And I've got a, a paper towel underneath here. And the reason I do that is two things. One, it enables me to kind of rub off the, the stuff that's accumulated, but secondarily, it keeps that stuff off my bench for the next reel that I'm going to work on. Okay, that should be better. Just going to take a cotton swab and run the inside of this because we know that it's sticking and that's the only place that's going to grab. I'm going to go put some grease back onto that little stud. Put the roller back on. And I want to make sure that I have full rotation on this. There we go. I think we've finally loosened it up there. That's probably why this wasn't taking off very well when uh, you first went to, to crank it. That should be roller to facilitate it. In this case, it was dragging it down. So this isn't the first one where that's been a problem. So if you have this model, know that uh, that, that could be a sticking point. All right. Very good. Still just working it. I want to make sure that we're all right. There we are. All right, we can... Just put that to the side for a moment, put that in the parts tray. Got some cleaning up to do on the main gear. So if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, and you uh, maybe you're working on a reel, maybe you want to learn a little bit more about a reel, maybe you've got a reel you consider buying, uh, maybe you got a reel where you're trying to work on it and you're stuck, just can't figure out how it comes together or, or the like, leave that question in the... Uh, comment section and we'll try and get back to you to uh, give you an answer and hopefully I know the answer but you know there's a lot of reels out there and a lot of ones I haven't worked on and a lot I don't know the answer to so don't be afraid to ask and I won't be afraid to tell you I don't know the answer to it. I'm going to remove the, the gear and the two shim washers. Folks that asked me about what these shim washers, what's the purpose of those, that's to true up the main gear connection and take the play out of it. There's always a certain amount of uh, wiggle or play in the manufacturer tolerances and uh, these are set at the plant for the main gear. So you may find that you how to replace your main gear and then you uh, something's running a little rough. Don't be afraid to go back in and check. Make sure that the uh, shim washers are properly shimmed. It may be that they put two or three on the original main gear, and uh, you don't need that many on the replacement. So, and that's a tough one. That's hard. I, somebody said, why don't you do a video on It's kind of hard. It's a matter of touch, and that's kind of hard for me to explain in terms of uh, the tolerances. That's one thing I don't do very well there. Okay, I'm going to loop that up, and then I'm going to put that into the parts tray as well, because we need to go up top to service the balance of this wheel. Okay, so having diagnosed the problem as that little wheel on the crosswind block that was uh, corroded and uh, just not functioning properly, we went ahead and did the rest of it. 
I think the video showed you up through the removal of the drag stack. Those were all lubricated. And the reel reassembled following the process that was the reverse or the inverse of the, um, the way we took it off. And now's the test. Do we have a stumble as we start to wheel? And we don't. We have a nice smooth pickup. And that's because that, uh, that little wheel is, is turning the way it should be on that cross wind block. And the reel is not sticking any longer. Uh, very interesting little occurrence. And like you said, if one time you say it's unusual, the second time around you say it's a little bit of a fault with the reel. And this time around I'm, I'm pretty much going to say that that is a big problem for the Spin Fisher 5 series that utilizes that. So there you go. Nice functioning reel, smoothed up, get, getting rid of the sticking point for a runny. And uh, if you want to see the full piece, uh, I've, I've completed the video on the 3500. They're identical. Go back, uh, you'll see uh, the second part of it with the drag stack and the reassembly. And, uh, but I wanted to just use this one to focus on that problem we had with the pickup. And that pickup problem is, uh, is the issue with that little uh, burring on that cross wind block. So, uh, if you are a first responder or essential personnel, I want to take a moment to thank you for all it is that you're doing during the pandemic. And for the rest of us, including yourselves, let's all stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.